Welcome inside episode 701 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan coming to you from the Sunshine State in Florida alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. And we are reliving the highs and lows of last night's Ottawa Senators 3-2 shootout win over the Boston Bruins and also taking a peek ahead at an extremely crucial portion of the schedule. And we have a Sen Central citizen today. It's Daniel Tykro. He tells us all about how he became a Sens fan, and he also has some signed LOSP memorabilia. What? Well, all that plus. We also get into a pair of players who were key contributors last night who don't have contracts beyond this season. What are the values of Cam Talbot and Alex Dabrinkit? All of it is brought to you by Farm to Fork. Visit farm2forkdelivery.ca today and taste the farm to fork difference. You will never go back to grocery store meats. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Lockdown Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Schützler, and you're listening to the Lockdown Senators Podcast. Thank you for making Lockdown Senators your first listen on this Wednesday, December 28th. The show is free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by clicking the thumbs up, subscribing to the Lockdown Senators channel, and making sure you put that notification bell on so you know. When new videos go live, just like the postcast last night, it was an electric atmosphere after what was the most fun overtime I've seen all season. And we saw the Timmy backhand pass to Giroux, that breakaway goal. But despite no goal score, maybe it's the goalie friendly showing us, Pilsy. That was an amazing five minutes of hockey. Yeah, I mean, that whole game was pretty amazing uh, from start to finish. But the overtime... When you've got players like uh, Stutzla, Debrinkit, Batherson, Brady, Thomas Shabbat going up against the Boston Bruins heavy hitters, Marchand, Pasta, Bergeron, Taylor Hall, like it's so awesome to see these two teams go head to head. And the thing that's great about overtime is it's all the stars. Like the Ottawa Senators have seven injuries, eight now when you count Nikita Zaitsev, who was injured in the first period of this game. So you don't have to worry about the extra ice time of the bottom six. It's all just star power. Go, go, go. And there was like five or six legitimately scoring chances for both teams in this one in a short five-minute span. What a game. What a game. But there were times in the third period where you might not have felt that way as the Huff or Boston Bruins outshot the Ottawa Senators by quadruple five times. It was a shooting gallery on Cam Talbot, who made, what, 25 saves in the third period, Pilsy? It was completely one-sided. The penalty late that Travis Hamnick took really put the Sens on their heels. He battled as long as he could, but ultimately the Bruins did tie it up with 333 left. At that time, are you thinking, oh, man, they're losing this game? No, I didn't think they were losing this game, Ross. Actually, quite the opposite. Uh, I mentioned on the postcast, I know you can throw your fruit and boo at me right now, but I did bet on the Boston Bruins ahead of this game. And when they scored that goal to tie it, I actually cashed out all my Bruins bets and then reinvested it into your Ottawa Senators. And that ended up working out pretty well for me uh, uh, with our friends over at Bet Online there. But I just felt that Cam Talbot... Look, sure, that's a goal maybe you don't love, but he just stopped like six incredible scoring chances on the PK. He was feeling it. I thought if this game goes to overtime, there's going to be a lucky break for the Sens. And Brady and Timmy both had great breakaway opportunities where they did the in-between-the-legs move. So I thought these guys are feeling it. I'm confident that they can get it done here. The home crowd was insane. Even with a lot of black and gold jerseys, the home crowd was awesome. The biggest, the most packed barn of the night, Ross. What a treat to see NHL attendance Twitter and see the Sens on top there. So just like, th th what a way to come back from the Christmas break. We missed the Sens for a couple days and now boom, amazing hockey game up against the best team in the NHL and mix in a W. Thank you. So for a more detailed 
conversation of each play. You can always go rewatch or re-listen to the postcast that we do after each and every Ottawa Senators game. That's bonus content. And then we stayed after dark for bonus bonus content completely optional but we appreciate everyone who tunes in and and has positive things to say we're doing it i mean the postcast after dark we're mostly doing for ourselves it's either we just turn off the recording and continue our conversation or we just allow the good people to interact with us as we go on so if you want to catch up on the ins and outs of the game there you go the postcast i'll point you in that direction because we got bigger fish to fry pillsy And there's a big stretch of games coming up. Before we get to that, though, I got to pull this up. And I don't understand how game score is calculated. I really don't. But it's always fun to see certain, like, trends. Just like we talked about with Drake Batherson. Like, plus, minus, flawed stat. We know that. But when you're, like, an outlier compared to the norm, it's still worthy of, of like, curiosity and and saying, what does this mean? Well, I'm pulling up right now the game scores. and, And Hockey Stat Cards pulls this out on their Twitter account after each and every game. I just found it hilarious that Cam Talbot had the highest game score last night, followed by 10 straight Boston Bruins players before you get to the next Senator. Like, look at that gap there, Phil. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, I will preface this with saying I don't have any understanding of how this works, but Charlie McAvoy would not have been the second guy on my list in this game. Like, I thought, uh, apart from a couple hits that he had, uh, he laid out Parker Kelly, and I think... Jake Lucchini as well. But other than that, I didn't really notice him. So Cam Talbot obviously deserves this one. And uh, we'll save the the franchise uh, record stats for the back half of the show when we get into their contracts. But just an incredible game by Cam Talbot. And at least five or six game-saving saves where guys like, oh, I don't know, have you heard of David Pasternak, one of the best scorers in the league, has an uh, awesome scoring chance, and Cam Talbot gets over for the save. David Krejci, he stopped a couple times. Like when, when he's feeling it, Cam Talbot is amazing. Like The value that you're getting uh, from his contract that's under $3.5 million, awesome. Awesome. And what we saw last night was an awesome shootout. Ugh, I can't even say it with a straight face, dude. I was trying to, I was trying to move. Man, I, I like the shootout here. And we talked about this. I know you want to see more overtime, but I think if this overtime goes any longer, Ross, the Ottawa Senators end up on the wrong side of things because their top players were gassed. I mean, Thomas Shabbat played over 30 minutes. Timmy played 24 after playing a career high 27 in the last game uh, a couple days ago. Like, I just think, when you're pushing it up against the NHL's best team, the shootout was the best way for the Sens to win. So I know it's a lame take, but I was excited for this shootout because I really thought that was their best chance to win. And there you go, Alex to bring it the only shootout goal scorer right off the hop. And he sends the fan sends fans home happy. Did you agree with DJ's decision to go Alex DeBrinkett, then Tim Stutzla, then Drake Batherson as his three shooters? Because, I mean, that was game 34 of the season, but it yeah. was the first opportunity to see what the shootout lineup would look like. Yeah, we talked about this a while ago because we thought it was going to happen, our shootout lineup. And I think that's probably the order I go. Maybe I put Brady as a last shooter, not because I think he's an incredible shootout guy, but just... He's, he's the captain, he's so clutch. Like, if it's all on the line, I want Brady Kachuk out there. Like, that's just how I feel. So, yeah, I probably would have went uh, Debrinket, Timmy, and then Brady myself. But it ends up working out good just the way it is. Yeah, I mean, Josh Norris is the obvious omission. If he's in the lineup, he's shooting. He's been so good over his career in the AHL and in the NHL yeah, agreed. Uh, in shootouts. And then... The fans didn't even get to pray. Maybe we see Artem Zub in the shootout. <laughs> I think that's going to be a couple uh, later rounds. But he would be the first defenseman to go. I would do Zub over Sanderson, Shabbat, any of those guys. I mean, <laughs> Hamannick would be beaver tapping out there on the shootout. My God. Oh, man, that was good. So, yeah, Alex Dabrinka gets the only goal. Makes a great move, by the way. Like, that was – he was showing off his hands just like he did in the game. That bouncing puck, he was able to corral it, pull it to his forehand, and bring the Senators to glory in this game against the Boston Bruins. The Bruins are 27-5-2. Seven total losses on the season. Sorry, seven, uh, four, and three because it was an overtime loss, shootout loss last night for them. But the point remains, they've had seven losses, period. Anyway – and the Senators are responsible for two of them. And Martian put out a good tweet, too. The Boston Bruins are 0-3 
in Ontario this season. They lost in Toronto and they're 0-2 in Ottawa yet to win a game. Hopefully if playoffs come, they can change that up because <laughs> I mean, they will. Yeah. Yeah. We need the blue team to, uh, to fall out in the first round, just like the leaves do every year. Um, but great game last night. Again, we'll touch on a franchise record that was set by Cam Talbot in last night's game. Pillsy, last note before we move to our send central citizen, Nikita Zaitsev is going to be out a decent amount of time. You touched on how some defensemen had to step up. He only played seven minutes out after blocking a shot in the first period. The senators have recalled Jacob Larson, to play. So now the third pair right now is Jacob Larson and Dylan Hetherington with Nick Holden mostly playing beside Thomas Shabbat for last night's game. That is concerning. And that's just extra reason why it's so impressive that this team was able to pull out the win. Again, it's it's a goalie win. Cam Talbot steals this game, but it's a lot of great play by the Ottawa Senators decor as well. I thought apart from a couple mistakes, they were pretty good and cleaned up their mistakes. Jake Sanderson had that incredible um, back check off his giveaway, off his turnover, and he ends up uh, blocking the shot there. So everyone played well here, but man, I think you can only test fate so many times with all these injuries. Like three, four of these, this team's defensemen are out here. Zub, Branstrom, Zaitsev, and JBD. Like, this was a weak decor already, and now you take out all those pieces. So it's going to be very interesting because, Ross, we'll, uh, we'll get into it. But this upcoming stretch for the Ottawa Senators are crucial, crucial division matchups. They certainly are. And if you're watching on YouTube, the standings I just pulled up here. I'll zoom it in a little bit. It looks a little... Uh, wide there. We haven't pulled up the standings in quite a while. Wow, that's the vibes in Sensland. We're talking standings. I can't zoom in that much. I guess the Metropolitan doesn't really matter. The top three teams there. We're we're looking at wild cards here. Yeah. Um, but the Senders, I mean, they passed the Montreal Canadiens last night. Montreal in Tampa tonight. I'm going to the game. I'm going to have my Bolts pom poms on. I'll be cheering for Tampa because, well, frankly, I just hate the Montreal Canadiens. But all that aside, I think you're looking at a situation where the three teams ahead of Ottawa are all within two points, and they're all divisional teams, even in the wild card. So it's real tight. Detroit with 35 points, Buffalo with 34 points, Florida with 34 points, and now Ottawa has 33. Now, Buffalo and Detroit have two games in hand on Ottawa, which you don't love to see, but that's where it brings me to the schedule, Pilsy. Next weekend, this upcoming weekend, the Senators are in Detroit on New Year's Eve and then home to Buffalo. On January 1st. In between that, they've got the Washington Capitals who are 9-1 and in their last 10 games and have won five in a row. Of course, one of those wins coming in overtime against the Ottawa Senators. So those three games coming up, if they can run the table, I'm not, hey, I'm not saying they will, but if they can, things will become a lot more interesting in the, in the Atlantic division. Yeah, absolutely. It's just... It's just so unfortunate that all these injuries have to be happening right now. I mean, you can't use it as an excuse, and we're going to have to see more great games like that from Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg as we got a back-to-back coming up here. So it's going to be very interesting. That's the thing, Ross. We've covered this team for a while. It's not always good, but man, the Ottawa Senators are always entertaining. That's for sure. They certainly are. And after an entertaining game, usually get hungry. And today's episode is brought to you by, well, first I should tell you that coming up, we have our Send Central Citizen. We also have a great conversation coming up against about Alex DeBrinkett and Camp Talbot and just what they've meant to this team and what they could continue to mean going forward. All that's coming up next on the Locked On Senators podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Farm to Fork. It's the premium meat and seafood delivery service servicing the greater Toronto area, the Ottawa area, and you can even get it in Montreal. So head over to farm2forkdelivery.ca today and go check out all the great items. Like you honestly can't believe the these deals that they, they have already. And then you're going to add on top of it an extra 15%. Pilsy, I know you're all over some of these steaks. Oh, yeah. Even though uh, maybe your barbecue is covered in snow right now with Farm to Fork, it's always grill in season because they got the best meats. Not only steaks, Ross, pork, seafood, and you know I love chicken. Check out the chicken options as well, guys. Oh, it is great. I'm looking at it right now. They've got the beef, the 28-day top sirloin steaks, 10 steaks for 100 bucks. 
Like that way, you just, all you need to do when you're at the grocery store is just grab your veggies. They last longer in the fridge. And then on the day of, boom, you've got your flash frozen. So right away, super fresh, comes out, you thaw it up, and you just add your veggies. And away you go. You got a perfectly well-balanced meal. Head to farmtoforkdelivery.ca and taste the farm-to-fork difference. And make sure you use our promo code. For 15% off, use ZOOB15. Because we want to remind you that it's Farm to Fork with the number two, Farm to Fork Delivery.ca, 15% off with the promo code ZOOB15. If you've emptied all of your meat, all your freezer selections with family coming over for the holidays, there's no better way to restock for the new year than with Farm to Fork. So head over there right now, Farm to Fork Delivery.ca, and taste the Farm to Fork difference. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. And Ross, I uh, I dipped my toe in some prop betting in last night's game as well. Brady over shots, obviously that hit after the first period, so you got to stay on that before they bump it back up to four and a half shots. Shh, don't tell Bet Online this. Uh, I had Batherson power play point. That's easy money as well. He's on an 11 game point streak. He's on fire. And there's so many fun things you can bet on on betonline.net. So you can get some action on any game, especially Sens games. But it's not just hockey, guys. Check out their basketball stuff, football, boxing, UFC, golf, whatever you like. They got it. It's the trusted online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And we love them. Go check out the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Guys, it's betonline.net where the game starts. Now let's get to this week's Send Central Citizen. We're bringing on Daniel Tycro. All right, we now welcome on this week's Send Central Citizen. We're bringing on Daniel Tykro, a Send Super fan, I'm going to call him, in the heart of Canada. What's going on, brother? Welcome to Locked On Senators. Uh, not too much. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it, man. It was great to meet you at the home opener. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but we always start out the same way. How'd you become an Ottawa Senators fan? Uh, well... You know, I didn't really like hockey at the beginning. My parents signed me up for it, thought, you know, we'll get him into a sport and then took me to my first game. I think it was 2001 against Nashville and just stuck with them ever since. That's awesome. What do you remember from that game, if anything? Uh, not too much. I actually still have the, I just remember picking up an Alfie card, kind of in a blue case, and I still have that to this day. And I think I That's found the game. game. <laughs> Ross is always right on it. Let's hear the scorecard. I got, I got the ticket somewhere. Okay, oh, do you know, was it November 10th? It might, have been, it might have been. I mean, was it a win? Would... Yeah, it was 3 2 win. Ooh. Yeah, I think that was it. Let's go. Quick fingers on the keyboard. Uh, the game winner for everyone at home, Wade Redden, assisted by Daniel Alfredson. And Zidane O'Chara. So that's the era oh we're like. That, yeah, that that's brings awesome. me back. That's awesome. So who are some of your first favorite Ottawa Senators? Todd White. Uh, had a I mean, I, I got to I gotta go with Alfie. That's too easy. Give me another name. Uh, well, I can throw out some, uh, some obscure ones for you. How about that? I love obscure Senators. How about uh, Chris Hertberger? He played, <laughs> he scored a goal in that game. Is that why you like oh, him? Oh, did he actually? No, I just remember him from... Uh, do you, do you remember so when the, uh, I think it was, was it the Citizen of the Sun would print out those posters and they'd, they'd have one for every player and you'd collect them. I just remember okay. seeing one of his posters I was and it's just the name, the name stuck out. Yeah. He only played 169 NHL yeah. games. I never heard of that guy. Me neither. <laughs> Talk about obscure. I was going to say, but yeah. I had him log up and, and sure enough, he scored uh, the opening goal five minutes in. He scored the first goal you ever saw live at a Sens game. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Assist to Andre Waugh as well on that goal. Oh, so, there's a, there's a throw. Guy. Really throwing. Uh, and how did Martin Havlat sneak on the score sheet on that one? Eh? Hurt Burger from Waugh and Havlat. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> um, not even the best name in that game, though. A super side, Bubba Burnswig. That's a wild name. Uh, but that's awesome. So your first game was against Nashville. How often are you able to get out to the CTC? 
Uh, a bit more now, now that I've moved back to the Ottawa area. I lived in Hamilton for a bit and, you know, could only catch the games on TV, but moved back uh, just after COVID and wanted to be a bit closer to the family. So now I'm able to get back a bit more, which is nice. Nice. Are you a born and raised Ottawa guy then? Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's awesome. So no thoughts of turning blue when you were in Oh, Amazon? no, never, never. <laughs> What were your interactions like with uh, with some of the blue blooded fans down there? Uh, I mean, you got to be careful where you wear your Sens jersey too, definitely. But uh, you know, as long as you kind of keep to yourself, you won't have any issues. Yeah, I mean, any any time you're in enemy territory, which is basically anywhere in Ontario other than the Ottawa region, uh, yeah. you, you got to be mindful of uh, the blue folk. That's for sure. But. Uh, what are your what are some of other your uh, favorite memories as a Sens fan growing up in those those days? Like that era is uh, just an awesome time to be a Sens fan. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember actually watching the game that sent Ottawa to the Cup final. My grandparents were in town from Winnipeg, and we were watching the game nice. with them. And that's just a super special memory for me seeing Alfie score that game winner. Oh, that's awesome! And that was an afternoon game, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, oh, great way to carry the momentum into into the night. So we we talked about some of the early memories, and you just brought up playoffs. Like obviously that Buffalo series to go to the Cup final was amazing. But are there any other playoff series that stick out that you want to get into? Whether it was you know finally uh, finally winning a series against uh, against Tampa there after losing so many in a row there to Toronto. Like what what are some of the other series? Maybe a recent one, maybe like 2017. Something that really sticks out to you. Yeah, actually, I remember watching that one from Hamilton and uh, just being heartbroken when they won that game in double overtime, but just not expecting them to go that far. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have this miracle run and, oh, we're one goal away from making it to the finals. If there was one play from that 2017 run that that always will remain a memory for you, is there one that sticks out? Oh, it's, it's got to be the uh, the Carlson sauce to Hoffman and just yeah. the Forsberg. <laughs> the finish just makes it even that much better, hey? And yeah, for it to be in a playoff game too, like first ten minutes of the game, game yeah. first game in Boston because they played games one and two in Ottawa. They go to Boston. They're like, you know what? We we got the split. You always want the split. We're not in trouble till we lose at home. Well, yeah. guess what? We just saw a UFO go across our entire stadium, <laughs> land on a tee, and then the Hoffman post stamp. To finish it off, that was unbelievable. Great memory there, Daniel. Let's turn our attention to today's team with the I mean, you're wearing the reverse retro. If people are just listening, that's a sharp look, man. I like the way it looks on camera too, because those Senegos on top, they poke out. Like, was this a must buy the second you saw it? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm a bit of a jersey collector, so I'm trying to get at least one of every jersey. But yeah, I mean, I would have liked to have seen them go with the Senegos on front, but yeah. You know, it could have been a lot worse. I'll say that. Yeah, it that's de- the it thing. It definitely like, grows on you. Yeah, like it's very similar to the home jersey right now, which is great. One of the best jerseys in the league, unbiased opinion for sure. A couple nods to the past with the big letters and the Senegoths, but I say it every time, Daniel, and I, I got to repeat it. No Laurels was a big uh, di- disappointment. Yeah. How, how do you feel? Like they should have incorporated some gold on there, no? Yeah, ideally, I would have liked to see a red version of the Black Senegoth. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Okay, nice. That'd be sharp. I like that. The red, the that, gold. That was my ideal, my ideal go, but, you know, maybe someday in the future. That's fair, yeah. Is that a, do you have it unnamed, that reverse retro? Yeah, yeah. I have a guy in Ottawa that uh, customizes uh, jerseys. Actually, I'll shout them out. Uh, First Line Jerseys. They do nice. amazing work if you want to get something customized. Okay. So I'm, I'm just, I'm torn to, uh, between Pinto or Debrinket right now, so. Should we leave it to the comments? Should we say leave a comment, whoever has the more yeah. votes? Yeah, sure, sure. We'll do that. The bracket. Let's do it. Oh, that's where you're you're minimizing it to those two. Options. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I yeah. like that because with the reverse retro, you got to get a name and number uh, on the back. Like the number is half the thing. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is interesting though. I almost vote Pinto because I think eventually he's going to switch away from 57. 
which will then make your reverse retro yeah. more retro if he's rocking a different number. And 57 is a big boxy number with big <laughs> boxy letters. It just feels like it almost fits. Yeah. Well, I actually share a bit of a connection with him. I actually share a birthday with him. So oh, a bit of a personal oh, connection. Nice. There. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you mentioned that you've got a jersey collection going. You got the reverse retro. Are you? Which ones are you missing? Uh I'm trying to get some of the uh, authentic ones now. Uh, I'm missing – what am I missing? I'm not missing much. I was going to say, if you really have to think about it, you've got – Yeah. In the chamber. Do you, I feel the like only... you might be a guy that has a Peace Tower jersey. Those are very rare. No, get, no. I on want to pick one up, but they're, they're, they're pricey. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That would you like to see them wear a jersey based off of that one one day? I I think it'd be interesting if they could do it for like uh, an alumni game or something. Nice, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Ma- imagine an outdoor game, Tampa versus Ottawa, like the two expansion sisters come oh, up. Because then, like they, they bought that jersey out for the expansion and then just never never wore it. <laughs> Not only that, but hosted at part of Parliament Hill, like they did for the uh, the last alumni game. Yes. But, okay, so how, how do you build the scaffolding? You just kind of do it yeah. as, like, a for TV event? I mean, NHL, I feel like they would have had the opportunity, like Lake Tahoe, right, where when there was no fans allowed in the stands, like, that's when you go. Oh, that was beautiful because you could just hear hear all the conversations going on on the ice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this ice sucks. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> hey, it's ruining the game. <laughs> nice view, though. Yeah, it was, I, I will say the one thing interesting about the bubble was being able to hear everything that the players yeah. are saying on the ice. Cause you get a hot mic once in a while, but. So if Ryan Reynolds does get in with the Ottawa Senators, I mean, how, how quickly are you subscribing and, and what's the limit that you'd pay to get the full behind the scenes on ice, everybody mic'd up in the locker room, uh, like for post game speeches, pregame speeches, because I don't even think that I'd be comfortable saying what percentage of my income I would put towards. Oh, oh, same. Especially if it's if it's done by Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, that's all time, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's, and it's gonna be cool too, uh, just to stay on the Ryan Reynolds stuff. Like he's oh. gonna show, he's gonna show the whole lead up to how he got here. We're gonna see the behind the scenes of when he got interested, like. There's cameras rolling this whole time, probably. So the yeah. story behind this is going to be so much fun to watch for Sense fans. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Ke- Kevin will definitely have some, uh, some. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some memorabilia uh, contest. No contest on like. Oh, he's yeah. gonna have. Uh, yeah, he's gonna have a challenger now for the biggest Senators fan. <laughs> yeah, good so luck, Ryan. When, when you mentioned uh, we've been talking about Jersey, I thought you meant Kevin Lee. Bring back Lee. You no, know, no. No, no. I'm talking about Ottawa's biggest uh, Senators fan. Heck, yeah. He's going to love this one. Shout out, Kevin. We appreciate him. He's always in the postcast. We love that as well. And have, have you gotten a chance to meet Kevin at a Sens game yet? Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, Actually, I've met him a couple times at uh, the Sens Plex during the summer. Went to hopefully get some stuff signed. And I also ran Sweet. into him at the uh, the Expo. Where uh, Giroux was speaking, super so tell nice me guy. about uh, tell me about the sense box. What's the vibe there? Because obviously Pilsy and I, neither of us live in the Ottawa area. We haven't been down in the summer, so you just go. They they mix in a skate, and then you just see the guys that come out. Yeah, you go usually around ten o'clock in the morning ish, and uh, watch them skate, get some stuff signed either before or after they come in, and yeah, that's that awesome was that was when the re- real excitement built up for me for the season. Yeah, because all the new players that come in, all the guys that you're like, ah, are they going to get contract extensions? Is there going to be a long wait here? Nope, Pierre got it done quick. And the vibes for Sens fans in the summer was at an all-time high. Like, classic oh, yeah. Sens, the draft in the offseason is the pinnacle of uh, best vibes. Um, but, hey, the season's been pretty exciting, too. So I, I'm going to leave you with uh, my final question here. And... The Senators, they've shown some ups, some downs, but they haven't really been able to be consistent here. I mean, injuries play a big part of this. But if you're Pierre Dorian, are you out there looking for trades still? Do you think once this team is healthy, you can coast by? Or are you thinking they're so far out of this, it's not worth mortgaging the future? What's your idea of where Pierre Dorian should go with this team, Daniel? I mean, if a 
good deal comes up up 4D, I'd be open to that. But I'd say, you know, as long as everyone can stay healthy, you know, once you get Zub and and Norris back, I think I think we'll do all right. You know, if we can keep this momentum going, because we've we've looked a lot stronger now after that losing streak. You know, I think we're finally starting to gel as a team. Are you on the side that that the P word is completely out of the question? Or are you holding on just an ounce of hope? Uh, I mean, I think there there will always be that ounce of hope. I mean, hey, if St. Louis can come back <laughs> from being set, last yeah. in the league to winning the Stanley Cup, then, you know, there, there there's hope yeah. anywhere, right? I love that. Daniel, final question for me. Give me a locked-on player to watch for the next month. I think it's a crucial month for the Ottawa Senators. Who's one guy that's going to make or break the Senators' season? I, I think the Brinkett's going to start uh, – potting some more i think he's starting to finally build some momentum here with uh with the goals so not only that very underrated for assists as well you know you think of him more as a scorer but he's, he's super... been uh he's been uh getting quite a few assists there so yeah he's definitely underrated has... He's, he's looking like a, a true playmaker, which is the opposite of what we thought we were getting, a pure sniper, but certainly he's making an impact each and every night. We appreciate the impact you make on social media. I recommend everyone go give Daniel Tykro a follow. We're going to put his uh, his username here in the description. It's DJ Tykro at DJ Tykro on Twitter, man. Continue to be a part of the conversation, man. We absolutely loved meeting you. And before we let you go, you surprised us yes. with maybe the coolest thing at the home opener. I, for the people watching on YouTube, can you pull up what you brought to, to our meetup there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Daily's Bar and Grill. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Maybe the first time I've ever been asked to sign something. I told him, hey, I warned Daniel. I said, I'm devaluing this. <laughs> it was so cool of you. And we, we know that Daryl Quinlan really appreciated as well, the artist behind that. So I just wanted to thank you from us saying that, that that's the coolest thing. We we're super taken aback that you took the time to print that out, bring it in, and have us sign it. I thought that was the coolest thing. So we just wanted to say thank you, and uh, and we appreciate you, man. Yeah, it was no problem. Thanks for signing for me. And thank you for being a Sen Central citizen, brother. I, I'm excited to, to get back to Ottawa. When's the next time we're going to see you at the CTC? Uh, actually, I'll be there for the game on New Year's Day. Okay. And New Year's Day, so that's against Buffalo? Yep, Buffalo. Okay, so we got a got, a got a few tickets. I got tickets to Neil's Jersey retirement. Trying to get uh, we might tickets see you for there. the game on the sixteenth of March against the Avalanche. So a few a few more stops to the CTC in the books. Awesome. Well, we're we're aiming to be there for that Chris Neal game. So we'll see you there. We appreciate you, Daniel, and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Right, Pillsy, stick taps to Daniel for joining us. Great conversation with him. And you can always go find all of our Send Central citizens on one easy to navigate playlist on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for all that. Coming up, we've got a great conversation, an important one about the two main pieces still yet to be re signed going into this offseason Cam Talbot and Alex DeBrinkett. All that's coming up next on the Locked On Senators podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Glebe Central Pub. We know they're the everlasting sponsor of the postcast this year. The Glebe Central Pub has you covered with everything you want in a pub. Friendly staff, drink specials, easy to access. It's right in the heart of the Glebe. You can find it at 779 Bank Street. When you head in there, make sure you tell them that Locked On sent you. Not only are we fans of the bar itself, but we're fans of what they stand for. They stand for Senators Hockey. They've got shuttles intermittently throughout the season. So make sure you head to their website, GlebeCentralPub.com, and you can find when the shuttles are going. 15 bucks round trip. Are you kidding me? You can't even take an Uber to the Queensway for $15, let alone get there and back. So make sure that you head to the Glebe Central Pub and just be responsible, right? You can have a few pops, feel good about it, not worry, and then just head to the game, and then they bring you back right to the Glebe Central Pub. So head there today, Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street. Tell them Locked On Senators sent you. We appreciate our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. Go grab a beer, give them a cheers, 
and go say hi at the Glebe Central Pub. Make sure you let them know Locked On Senators sent you and head on their shuttle. January 7th is the next one here as they take on the Seattle Kraken. It's the Glebe Central Pub in the heart of the Glebe where you get tasty drinks and great food specials. It's the Glebe Central Pub. All right, Pilsy. So we got important conversations to have. And I know there's other guys. Shane Pinto, RFA after this season. What's going to happen with Eric Branstrom, whose underlying numbers are superb, but he's tied with Nikita Zaitsev in points, and Zaitsev spent time in the minors. So I think there's some interesting conversations that we can have throughout the rest of the season on Branstrom, on Pinto, but the most crucial RFA is Alex Dabrinkit. We know that his cap hit is 6.4, but... He's making $9 million, which means his qualifying offer is going to be $9 million. However, we've seen it in the past where some players will take less for the term. Yeah. Right? Do you think there is any reason to think that his next contract, no matter whether it's five, six, seven years, eight years, hmm. that it could be under $9 million on an AAV, or is that the starting point no matter what the term is? I think for sure it could be under $9 million, especially when you look at the cap structure of this team and Timmy's at – a little over 8.3 Brady's at a little, a little over 8.2. So for Alex to bring it to be above 9 million, I, I don't know if, if that's going to work for the Sens cap structure here. I think obviously he has a lot of leverage with that qualifying offer being at 9 million, but I think it seems like he fits in here. He's changed. He's been able to change his game from being just an elite sniper to having other really valuable assets. So I think there's no reason why, especially he's a, he's a young guy with a new family, just had a kid. It's a great place to raise a family. Ross, you grew up in Ottawa. It's a great spot for everything is right there for you. And I think he can look at this core and be like, hey, maybe we don't have it right now, but we've got all the pieces. Guys are locked up. I want to be a part of this. And I think for sure you could get him under $9 million at – I'm thinking it would be a, a five or a six year deal, Ross. I don't know if they would go seven or eight, just because I'm nervous about them locking everyone up for seven or eight years. And then not that I don't have faith in this core, but if things don't work, then you're stuck. So I think they're going to have a little bit of flexibility. And Alex Dabrinkit, I could see doing a six year deal, maybe like 8.8, .8, something like that, depending on how things go. That's just me spitballing here. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think I think he goes term. I think that he has that leverage in a negotiation where if he's like, okay, well, if you don't want to go seven or eight, why don't I just go one? Because I'm getting I'm getting seven on the open market. I just think if he if he goes a little less, Ross, like he's 25 right now, so if he gets a five year deal, he is a UFA in his early 30s. You got one more big meal ticket you can cash in on there. Whereas if you get into 32, 33 then you're probably it's less likely you're going to get that massive deals and especially with salary cap going up tv deals going up i think a lot of players are kind of eyeing ufa a little earlier now so they can cash in on the new available money that's going to be there so it's going to be interesting and and like i said i don't know if the sens are are going to be too interested in locking everyone up absolute long term here I love watching him play. He's even got a bit of bite to him, eh? He's, yeah. he's not afraid to throw some hits in on the forecheck. But, and I think that's a part of the DJ Smith effect. Like, hey, sure, you're a goal scorer, but you're not scoring, scoring goals right now at the rate we thought you were. So what else are you going to do? You got to play just as hard. You got to play with pace, physicality, just like everybody else on this team. I don't care how small you are, how much money you're making. So I think... That's a really good testament to the coaching staff here, which we got to give some stick taps to as they're fighting through this roster with half of the guys they thought they would have. Even the replacements, Ross, are getting injured and need replacements. So I think all around, it's a good job by this team. Now let's turn our attention to the back end. Obviously, we'll have plenty of time to discuss to bring its contract. Still waiting, Kevin Weeks. I'm keeping my eye. <laughs> yeah on the Debrinka contract conversation, but hey, he looks like he's having a great time. You see Travis Hamnick meowing in the background, or here, I should say, you can see him behind the curtain, and Debrink, it's just, he looks like he's having a great time, even on the ice, celebrating that goal with, with Shabbat and those guys. Like It's great to see. It really seems like he's starting to fit in more and more. Definitely, and I think maybe when the season started and he wasn't scoring, 
people were a little unsure how he was fitting in, but I don't have any doubts now. No doubts. And wham, bam, cam in goal has just been ridiculously consistent. Sure, there's a goal here, a goal there that you'd like to see him probably get, but when he's rocking the way he is, he he really just exudes confidence in this team. Now he's 35. He's coming off a, a deal where he's making money in the in the mid three. I think it's 3.66 that he's getting on an AAV. Like, yeah, three point six. I'm I'm I'm, conf- I'm confused about this one because yeah. they don't have an they don't have another option to be like the the dude who's got like veteran stability. I know Forsberg signed for the next two years at a really reasonable cost. 2.75 you got to kind of remember a little bit that they're still paying matt murray next season under two million dollars something like that but i think that you're probably you're willing to be a bit more patient but if they give them the nick holden where it's like hey take like 3.5 like a bit of a pay cut but we'll give you that that 36 year old contract man he's earned it because why don't you bring up now this guy set a sends franchise record last night yeah it, it shocked me ross i i didn't really fully kind of comprehend it but 49 saves in a regular season win is a franchise record for your Ottawa Senators. And Ross, a key part of that stat is regular season has to be put in front of that. I don't know. Did you get a chance to read Ian Mendez's article today? Yeah, I did. Because I knew I knew Craig Anderson was up there because it was his Senators debut in Toronto. Yeah, I mean, a- Andy making 40 plus saves is something we got very used to over the time. But the record isn't held by Craig Anderson. It's held by an obscure Ottawa Senator, Pascal Leclerc. Oh, oh, you're talking about the the, uh, the all time record because that was in the playoff game, right? That's that's what I said. That was a fr- that was a regular season franchise record. But you have to say regular season because in 2010, Pascal Leclerc made 56 saves in a triple overtime win against the Penguins. I mean, I I never. I I never would have guessed that in a trivia question. Pascal Leclerc holding the all-time sends saves record. My God, what a throwback. Further to that, who scored the triple overtime game winner in that one? Oh, I have absolutely no clue. Matt Karkner. <laughs> wow. Scored the, it was a knuckler from the point. I remember watching that game like it was yesterday. But Those goals he- happen. The knucklers in uh, multi-overtimes. We know that. In Pittsburgh. Yeah. It was a road game, too. Um, and, and you mentioned, well, Craig Anderson held the regular season record before last night. It was 47 saves. He had a shutout in Toronto in his first game with the Ottawa Senators. So, wild to think. But, like, what would you be most comfortable with for his next contract? Like, would you be comfortable going two years? I saw some people throw out, hey, give him a two-year extension. I think you're going to have to, Ross, because if you don't give him two years, he's going to hit the market. And there, there are definitely teams that will do that. And... I don't think he's going to be looking for, or I don't think he'll take a discount, Ross. I think you probably have to go closer to four million here, and so I, I'm thinking to get it done, you probably need a two-year, four million dollar AAV, and that's obviously not ideal. I think maybe the second year of that may not go great, but hey, we've seen goalies being able to perform. You just mentioned Craig Anderson; he's in his 40s and he's still kicking around getting contracts, so. Um, I think it's definitely something the Senators need to start addressing now because I don't want it to go further because Forsberg's great, but he is not a starting goalie. Like he's at best a 1A goalie, but Cam Talbot is the 1A goalie for this team. And I feel very comfortable having Forsberg as a 1B playing, you know, 30 starts a year and having Talbot playing 50 for the next while because Matt Sogard is is not close to being NHL ready. And that's okay. He's a young goalie, and we saw it with Philip Gustafson. If you rush them or don't give them proper development, it things don't work out smoothly. So I want to see Mad Sogard comfortably playing in the NHL another two seasons as the starter at least. And then, or AHL, sorry, in Belleville. So that gives him a lot of time to get ready to work on his development. Uh, I have a lot of faith in Mad Sogard, but I just don't think he can be rushed here. So having Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg as your tandem for the next two, three years, I think, including this year, if Talbot gets a two-year extension, I think is good because if you let Talbot walk just because you don't want to pay him a little extra on a second year, I think that's a big mistake. 
So after allowing five goals on 24 shots against the Winnipeg Jets in front of my bleeding eyes, uh, Cam Talbot has stopped 86 of, get this, he's stopped, he's had 91 shots at him in the last two games. Yeah, I mean, that is insane. Welcome to the Ottawa Senators. However, both games did go past regulation, so that could be the caveat there. But yes, a 945 save percentage over the last two games, earning the Senators three of a possible four points. The schedule is back, right? We had our Christmas break. They're back. Yep. So last night against Boston, tomorrow against Washington, the hottest team in the NHL, I think it's fair to say, nine wins in their last 10 games. And then the crucial back-to-back on New Year's weekend against division rivals but- at the Right home to Buffalo. Just one thing on Washington. The Ottawa Senators have injury troubles. They just placed Carlson on IR in Washington. Yeah. So, obviously, you don't cheer for injuries. But when you're down this bad, it's it's a nice little uh, bit of assurance being like, okay, at least their top defenseman isn't going to be there. So, that should help or at least give the Senators a little bit of relief there. Just because you said that, I bet you that Tom Wilson makes the season debut tomorrow. Uh, yeah, obviously. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Right, him and Nicholas Baxter both skating, but both have been out with injuries. So unfortunate, man, that Connor Brown got uh, got yeah. injured early in the season and will miss a huge contract year mm-hmm. for him um, in Washington. Uh, the next week, though, is pretty quiet. Uh, just one game all week against Columbus on the Tuesday. The Sens are Ooh. off Wednesday, the fourth, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, they, that's a must-win game. Ross, we thought the Anaheim Ducks were a tasty, juicy win. I think the Columbus Blue Jackets, I mean, that is going to be cookie night. That's going to be point night for sure. It better be. Long way to go between now and then, and we'll have you covered every step of the way here on the Locked On Senators podcast. We'll chat tomorrow on Thursday. Hope you enjoyed our Send Central Citizen. And, of course, tomorrow after the game, you can join Martian and Pilsy in the postcast as well. Pilsy, any final thoughts before we sign off today? Final thoughts is that was an absolute blast to watch of a hockey game. I mean, if you're a Sens fan, especially if you were at that game, that might have been the greatest Tuesday of your life if you weren't there for the home opener. So uh, definitely stoked that that was a packed barn and uh, the Ottawa Senators did not disappoint. Absolutely. I'll just echo those sentiments and say, man, Talbot's save on DeBrusque in the shootout was ridiculous getting that blocker out on that one of a ton of great saves for cam talbot tonight make sure you uh let us know in the comments what should daniel get on his reverse retro jersey pinto or to bring it all that we'll get the answer to we'll, uh, we'll put a pull up on twitter as well afterwards but i want to see what the comments have to say first for today though we say goodbye for brandon pillar i'm ross levitan and this has been the locked on senators podcast your team every day